You know, audio components in general and speakers in specific are probably the most difficult things we review at GeekBeat. I know there are no buttons or dials and you don't really need a manual or anything like that, so how hard could it be to just plug them in and tell you how they sound, right? If all you want is a 60 second review, here it is. The Kef Q series speakers sound great and you can really live with them for a long time. Now they aren't as sexy as a set of Martin Logan electrostatics, but in my opinion they do outperform the lower end ESL series and possibly anything else in their price range. There's no way you can go wrong with a set of these kefs. As you know, speakers are just one part of a home entertainment center. The centerpiece of any good system is a receiver that handles all the signal processing and provides the power to drive the speakers. In this case, we're using an Onkyo TX-NR809. It's about a thousand dollar receiver and it supplies 135 watts to each of the seven speakers. Audio files will use words like flat or edgy to describe the characteristics of various speakers, but about the only word I need to describe these kefs is right. There's just one catch. The cues need a healthy dose of volume to really be in their element. At lower listening levels, they sound a little kind of boring, I guess. Not bad, but I wouldn't spend the money on a big set of speakers like these, or any others for that matter, if you never plan on turning them up a bit. You could go with the smaller Kef T205 series we previously reviewed in that case. But back to these cues. If you plan to watch movies with the family or listen to music at medium volume levels or higher, well that's another story altogether. The cues really come into their own once the volume knob hits about 50%. They sound smooth and soothing no matter what we throw at them. Rock, rap, jazz, country, action, it doesn't matter, it's all good. I think the best way to describe the Q series is to say that although I've been listening hard to try and define their characteristics, they are remarkably uncharacteristic. They're just balanced, highs, mids, lows, and at the end of the day, that means you're free to just listen without judging them or sitting around silently regretting a purchase decision. Okay, let's switch gears for a minute and take a look at the details. The Kef Q series offers multiple choices for the front, center, and surrounds. The system I tested included the largest in each of the categories, starting with the Q900 floor standing speakers. As you can see, the Q900s are pretty big. They stand nearly four feet tall, which means they're obviously towering over me on our set where we take all the pretty pictures here. Back to the story though, the Q900s use Kef's one and a half inch unique vented aluminum tweeter setup, which does a great job of spreading the high frequencies and also eliminates the harsh hissing sound that comes from a lot of tweeters. The 900s also have an eight inch mid-range and one eight inch aluminum woofer with two auxiliary base radiators. I know that's a big mouthful. The woofer's in the middle and it's powered, the only one that's powered, and the other two move inside the cabinet as the woofer pushes the air around. These big boys will handle up to 200 watts and they can be bi-amped if you have a receiver capable of doing that. By the way, Kef also offers Q700 and Q500 models that are identical in design but have smaller drivers. So you can shave about 30 to 40% off your total system cost if you opt for the smaller versions. The Q600C does duty as the dedicated center channel. It uses a slightly smaller one inch tweeter a six and a half inch woofer and a matching six and a half inch passive radiator. It can also be bi-amped and the center channel is rated for 150 watts. Moving on to the subwoofer. The Q400B is a 10 inch sub with a built in 200 watt amp. The best thing about this sub is its size. As you can see, it's compact. It's a little one foot cube so it can fit in tight corners. Personally, I prefer a little larger subwoofer just to capture those really low frequencies from things like movie explosions, but the Q400B still sounds really good. It puts out plenty of bass and it doesn't sound sloppy or boomy in any way. Bringing up the rear is literally where a pair of Q300 bookshelf speakers, which each use the one inch tweeter and a ported six and a half inch woofer. Now, if you've only got a 5.1 receiver, you're done. You can just stop there. But if you're running 7.1 like me, the Q800DS dipole speakers are gonna handle the left and right side channels. The entire seven piece set plus a subwoofer will run you about 4,600 bucks. Now for a precision set of British engineered speakers, that's unheard of. 
but they keep the costs down by manufacturing these things in China, just like Apple does. Based on their build quality, I'd expect the set to easily last a decade or more. Heck, your kids might be inheriting them for all we know. Which brings me to the final analysis. As far as their sonic characteristics go, I'd give these cues a perfect score. When it comes to value, they probably deserve like a 9 out of 10. My only regret is that rather than their traditional appearance, I wish they could have inherited some of their big brother's good looks, like the blades. Ugh, those are sexy. Of course, if appearance means that much to you, and you got 200K sitting around, I guess you could just pick up some of the muons. If not, the cues will do just fine. Head on over to geekbeat.tv forward slash Q series for all the specs, prices, and links galore. I'm John P. Thanks for watching.